It's the beginning of the 20th century. Archaeologists have been working in the Valley of the Kings for decades. Among them is one man who is about to change the course of history. His name is Howard Carter. Howard Carter was an English archaeologist, and what he wanted, just as every other archaeologist working in the area wanted, was to make a spectacular discovery of his own. Howard Carter was convinced that there was still a significant pharaonic tomb waiting to be revealed, somewhere in the soil of the Valley of the Kings. In 1907, another archaeologist unearthed a small mysterious cache called KV-54. Inside, there were embalming materials, such as strips and cloths. Carter examined each element carefully. The face of a small unknown statuette and a gold ring caught his eye. On it, he deciphered a name, written in hieroglyphics, the name of the pharaoh Tutankhamun. For Carter, there was no longer any doubt. This meant at least one thing was certain. Tutankhamun had been buried in the Valley of the Kings, and until now, his tomb had not been found or identified. So Carter decided to go on a quest to find the missing tomb. One doesn't excavate to find objects, but to prove a hypothesis, to confirm it. Howard Carter's hypothesis was that the tomb of Akhenaten's successor, Tutankhamun, was somewhere in the Valley of the Kings. What's astonishing is that almost nothing was known at the time about the mysterious King Tutankhamun. He was the 11th ruler of the 18th dynasty and reigned for about 10 years. It's believed that he was perhaps a child, and that he was simply forgotten by history. Or was he deliberately left out of the history of the pharaohs? His reign is an enigma as far as ancient Egyptian history is concerned. Discovering his tomb would bring vital answers to the questions posed by the archaeologists. Howard Carter wanted to find the trail leading to this lost king at all costs. For years, he worked relentlessly on multiple excavations. He had the support of Lord Carnarvon, a rich English investor, who funded the archaeologists' research. But he was not the first to excavate the grounds of the Valley of the Kings. About 30 tombs had already been discovered in the decades preceding Carter's excavations. By November 1922, in fact, Carter had been working in the area for a number of years without really any great success. There were people who believed that the valley was exhausted. There was not going to be anything more to find. Five years went by, and Carter still hadn't found anything. In 1922, there was no money left, and the archaeologists knew it. This dig season would be his last. And then, on that famous autumn morning, his luck would finally turn. On the morning of the 4th of November, Carter arrived at the hushed site and was told that the beginning of a step had been found carved into the rock. Howard Carter held his breath. He unearthed a second step, then 16 in total, which basically made up a long staircase which descended four meters underground. It led to a closed door held shut by a rope and a clay seal, untouched just like the tomb, perhaps. That would be remarkable. It was extremely unusual to find a tomb of any kind that was intact to any extent. Usually when tombs are discovered, pharaonic tombs are discovered, uh, they've usually been robbed in antiquity, either reasonably near the time of the pharaoh's burial or perhaps in the later Greco-Roman period. What he did was quite surprising for that time. He closed everything up and sent a telegram to Lord Carnarvon, saying, wonderful discovery, tomb, seal intact, awaiting your arrival. For several weeks, Carter awaited the arrival of his benefactor to proceed with the excavations. When Lord Carnarvon finally arrived, together they cleared the whole path and began to break through a second door. They didn't know it yet, but this door was in fact the last obstacle that separated them from the greatest discovery in the history of the Valley of the Kings. When that blocking was removed, Howard Carter and his team were able to look through to see 
what there was on the other side, and that is the moment at which Carter was able to see the beginnings of a tomb that was crammed full of objects, and that is when he is asked, you know, can you see anything? And he says, yes, wonderful things. Carter went from room to room and from one surprise to the next, finding an antechamber and an annex filled with various objects piled on top of each other, sculptures and jewels. Then this huge chapel that occupied the entire burial chamber and finally a tiny room filled to the ceiling with gold. When he looked a little closer at what was in front of him, he realized that the royal name of Tutankhamun was pretty much everywhere. What Howard Carter discovered on that day in November 1922 was in fact a fabulous treasure, the complete funeral treasure of the king. I think that it's fair to say that even Howard Carter could not have expected to find what he did. For Howard Carter, this was the achievement of a lifetime. It was the fulfillment of a dream to see such a tomb and the treasures inside. Just, it exceeds our wildest imaginations. The press, who had rushed to Cairo, announced the news of the most amazing archeological discovery of all time. From being an unknown ruler, Tutankhamun became an international star. But a few months later, the story took a completely different turn. Relatively early on in the process, some rather strange events occurred. On the 5th of April, 1923, a few months after the tomb was discovered, Lord Carnarvon died. Some considered it to be the curse of Tutankhamun. And there are various strange stories that attach to the moment of his death. It's said that Carnarvon's dog died at apparently the exact same moment. All the lights went out in Cairo at that moment. That's all it took for the press of the time to go overboard and start basing their stories on ancient Egyptian myths. In the Arab tradition, there's always the curse of the pharaohs, Lanat al Pharaon. In some cases in Egyptian tombs, there were inscriptions, don't come in this tomb, don't violate this tomb, uh, you know, or something bad will happen to you. So then journalists started to notice these unexplained deaths. A few weeks after Carnarvon's death, financier George J. Gould succumbed to pneumonia shortly after visiting the tomb. Hysteria, strokes, pulmonary disease, suicides. For 10 years, the suspicious deaths of people that had visited the tomb kept piling up. The father of one of the deceased explorers, Lord Westbury, threw himself out of the window. Journalists at the time said that his hearse had run over a child on the way to the cemetery. In their eyes, the cursed pharaoh had struck again. In the decades that followed, up to 27 people closely or distantly associated with the discovery were declared victims of the curse. Some researchers entered the fray trying to find a scientific explanation for the mysterious deaths. From the first moment the tomb was opened, Howard Carter had noticed that the artwork was dotted with black spots. There were so many that they had disfigured the paintings. The archaeologists could perhaps have succumbed to asphyxiating pneumonia caused by an allergenic mold. If you close a room for 3,000 years and you have a mummy inside this room, the mummy will make germs that you cannot see. Archaeologists in the past, they were in a hurry. They enter inside the tombs and they die. But what I do today as an archaeologist, I open the tomb for a, a couple of hours until the bad air will go out and the fresh air will go in. Microbiologists have recently analyzed the black stains on the paintings in the burial chamber. They came to the conclusion that fungus had grown in the still humid air when the tomb was closed, but it's impossible for the parasite to have survived in a hermetically sealed place for 3,300 years. The myth doesn't hold up against scientific analysis. And the age at which the victims died equates, in fact, to the average life expectancy at the time, which was 52. Howard Carter himself died at 64, 17 years after the tomb was opened. So I think that this is a little bit of a story. It certainly sold newspapers, and even now people are obsessed by the curse of Tutankhamun. 
So Howard Carter may have warded off the curse. Since his death, no archaeologist that has visited the tomb has ever been associated with the curse again. It remains a good story, as befits the worldwide reputation of the pharaoh Tutankhamun.